These Pittsburgh pliers, the ones that have these nuts for the slip joint adjustables, these go Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. In front of me is a lot of metal, but it's not a car. These are all tools. Now, you're probably used to seeing tools on the channel, especially if Tavarish is in a video with us, but this is a special series that I wanted to do. A lot of you have expressed interest in wanting to become a hobbyist mechanic, a professional mechanic, and you'll get into the shop and uh, you'll see someone like me who has spent way too much on toolboxes and tools. And the question bears, do you have to do it? All of this in front of me, this tool kit, the storage, the pliers, and a toolbox with these pliers thrown in, I've spent just about $1,050 on all of this from Harbor Freight. Let me be clear, Harbor Freight is not a sponsor. If I don't like any of this, I'll tell you because uh, I don't owe them anything. I bought this tool kit to go with me on the last car trek. Normally I carry some type of crash kit as I call it to try to help keep those cars going. So before I can go into any details of these tools, I need to take the time to uh, unbox it and get them put together. And I hope to share some of my wisdom from the years that I've worked in a shop, information that was shared with me that uh, I ignored because I was young and knew everything, and hope to better equip you to buy your tools to start wrenching on your own projects, either professionally or in your home garage. Because believe it or not, you really don't need a $25,000 toolbox to be a good mechanic. There's lots of ways you can save money. And uh, speaking of saving money, today's sponsor has the ticket for you. Moving into this big uh, shop, there's equipment that I'm gonna need to buy and fill it up with. So I've gone online and started building a list with Karma. Karma is a Chrome browser extension and app that lets you never miss a coupon code or price drop on the items you're shopping for. So how does Karma work? Well, first on your computer, you go ahead and download the Chrome browser extension. Once you've got the browser extension installed or the app added on your phone, go ahead and head to any of your favorite online stores and you can start building your watch lists. As you add the items to your list, you can set different discount thresholds for your notifications. Then you can get notifications via email or mobile push when an item you've saved on your list goes on sale, has a relevant coupon code or comes back into stock. I got one alert that one item's already $100 less than it was when I added it, so uh, I'm ready to buy that one. And with the items that you save in your lists, you can break them down into multiple wish lists so you can keep them better organized and uh, prevent those impulse buys. And when you're shopping online and are checking out, Karma will automatically scan the web for coupon codes and will automatically apply them during checkout. This is a special feature if you use Karma on your computer, so the Chrome extension is a must. Another great feature with Karma is they've partnered with select retail manufacturers where you can earn cash back just by shopping with them. If you're ready to start saving money, click on the link in the description below to download the Chrome browser extension to get Karma working for you. Karma is an all-in-one shopping assistant that helps you shop smarter, save time, and money all automatically. Download it in the link below. So let's get you a little bit closer to everything that I picked up. Originally, I had planned just to go ahead and go with this tool kit. This is a 428 piece Quinn kit. That cost me $400. Now, whenever you're shopping for one of these kits, you need to be careful because a lot of times you'll see this safe 300 piece tool kit, 428, 500, 1000. And what you end up getting is hundreds of useless quarter inch bit drives. You know, you'll have 200 of those and four sockets. What I liked when you go over and kind of see what is included, you have ratcheting wrenches. You have a full array of sockets, including Torx and Allen sockets. So I was really excited to try this and see if it works. But um, as we discovered in the field, nothing is on a storage rail, it's all in boxes. So this works much better for you to pick up if you're gonna have a tool kit at home. This is just their less expensive Pittsburgh line of pliers. If I'm honest, I don't expect to like these, but they were cheap. We have the small micro pliers, which you'll need. We have plenty of wrench racks. We have one of these sockets. They sell them as a metric and SAE, more just for color coding, so you can grab them quickly. And then we've got some socket trays. Now to store all of it, again, they're a mess right now, but I've got a lot of tool storage. I didn't need a toolbox, but what, what? why wouldn't you buy a toolbox when you have a good excuse for it? Honestly, I wanted to get this toolbox. It was $399. They have a version that's $350 
where the bottom is a cabinet and you only have, I think, two sliding drawers. It was white, I'm stupid, and decided to buy one, but it's going to give me an opportunity to work out of it, so I can give you an honest opinion. Is this $1,100 worth spending for you at home or you as starting out as a mechanic? So uh, let's go ahead and set up a time lapse and we will get that out. I think I might have to put wheels on it. We'll get that together and we'll start unboxing this kit and talking about it. assembly was pretty simple. It was eight bolts for the casters and uh, four more for the handle. They do include, uh, I don't know, this uh, super high-tech wrench. And uh, yes, I did cheat and get a electric impact that I bought from Matco that costs more than, uh, well, that toolbox. And while taking it apart, I was kind of surprised to see it does come with some drawer liners. These are just pieces of foam that go on the bottom of the uh, each drawer and a lot of times when you're buying the cheaper toolboxes they are going to make that a add-in extra otherwise you just get raw metal one other thing i noticed pretty quickly on the box is its overall construction is good but it's not great there's a lot of rivets you can tell it is spot welded in some places these small dimples are signs of spot welds so it is Again, for the price point, assembled pretty well. One thing I'm curious about is uh, what on earth is this wood top? Is it real wood? Is it just kind of veneered wood? And uh, I think I know someone I might be able to get on a video call to tell us. Oh, hi. Oh, hello there, Mr. Dunn. What, what was that in your mouth? Uh, just some Baltic birch, just a casual afternoon snack, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you really are the wood man. Yeah, I'm the wood man. I really like wood. Okay. I'm calling because I have a question. We are doing kind of a cheap tool, toolbox, can you get started on the cheap? And uh, my toolbox has a wood top, and I could think of no one else more qualified who's probably not handled... I can't think of anyone who's handled as much wood as you. So I figured you could tell us... Uh, with my vast How expertise. What do you think of that beautiful Ooh, butcher block? shiny. Lots of excessive finger joints. Why did they not just use long board? How long is each they one They don't make them more than 12 inches in uh, Cambodia. <laughs> okay, so... So what do you think? Have you taken a hole saw to it? I'd be curious what the inside is like if it's just, you know, particle board, sawdust and glue smashed together. I mean, listen to it. Yeah, it'll be I mean, solid. That's solid, right? It'll be solid until you gouge it and then get oil in it, and then it'll start swelling up, and then you'll scrap it, or it'll fall apart. No, it's, it looks like a fine top. I just want to make fun it's of it. It's bolted on, so it's, it's, it's good, right? Yeah. Yeah, it looks fine. It looks definitely looks like it has plenty of coats of poly or whatever clear coat they used on it to protect the surface. So, uh, did they veneer and print finger joints? Like... <laughs> It's hard to tell. No, there's a little bit of texture change, so. 
Who knows? I would but. imagine the side banding would actually be made out of plastic or some sort of wood look laminate. But I imagine the top is at least used to be some sort of real wood. Maybe Harbor Freight will send uh, you and me a spare top and we can test. Yeah, you could just hack the corner off with a reciprocating saw and see what you find underneath. The, the reason I have this, you know, when you can look and see, you know, $100,000 worth of box there, is we're trying to answer the question is, can you, for less than $1,000, get even a professional level or high-end home garage toolkit? So that's full of tools that we're reviewing in this, and uh, your opinion of the wood top and box just from uh, looking at it. If it came from Harbor Freight, it, it, it's going to be cheaper. I don't imagine it's going to be actual solid birch or anything like that. Those are really short segments, and I can't imagine why they would go to all the effort of putting millions of finger joints in it if it's just sawdust underneath. So maybe real wood. It's just all the leftover scraps from the expensive stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I definitely like the box. There's no question about that. I would prefer a wood top over a metal top toolbox because it's, I don't know how to say this, it's softer. It's not, it's not, stuff's not going to slide right off of it. It might absorb oil over time, but if that's the case, then you can pick up a little woodworking and make your own top yourself. I work right. off of a wooden top every day. It's this thing, I've got a silicone mat over it, but this is, it doesn't even have but one po coat of poly on it. That's what I work off every day. Yeah, I, I, I like butcher block tops. Plus they look cool. Yeah. yeah especially everything's super industrial and you have just a little bit of earth, so. Well, all right, Mr. Dunn, I will let you get back to it. I appreciate your wood handling expertise. And uh, that was definitely the first time we called. We haven't been trying to get audio to somewhat work in three tries. Oh yeah, definitely not. I haven't been rehearsing this at all. Everything you see on YouTube is live and first time and real. Especially first starts. Oh, Every yeah. time an engine starts for the first time, that, that was indeed the first time. So, yep. uh, <laughs> all right, have fun with your batteries and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thank you, Robert. All right, see you later. All right, now with that box on and the opinion of Mr. Dunn, we are going to uh, start organizing these tools. Earlier on, you heard me reference a crash kit and how this kind of came up short in being that and meeting my goals on that side of thing. And when I reference crash kit, I'm meaning something like this. This is Silver Eagle. It's Matt Coe's budget brand. Snap-on has Blue Point, And uh, I don't know what Mac or the other companies have, but it is a more affordable line and it worked perfectly for many years for me and it still does this has been to almost every car track until most recently i've taken it to junkyards and everything and what's nice is you have a fairly robust case that holds everything this thing is dirty sockets move around a little bit because it has been used a ton everything is still here except um huh anyway of course those are the ones missing, but this has worked really well. This is just sockets and wrenches though, and I was hoping to get something with a few more pieces, and that's where the allure of the Quinn kit came in. But I will tell you, this is better for you to get in a home garage because it just comes in bags. So we have all of our organizational kits there. We are gonna start putting this in and talk about some of the parts that came with it, and then I'll go ahead and compare the Quinn sockets to the Silver Eagle to the Snap-on and Matco sockets I have as well, just to kind of give you an overview of what you may be giving up if you buy a budget kit or not. and we have got everything, well, most everything, into some type of storage. Again, I just walked down Harbor Freight and grabbed all of their storage racks, and some of the wrench rack sizing makes no sense. You're missing and jumping around a little bit too much, but I was able to get just about everything stored nice and securely. These ratcheting wrenches feel pretty good. I'm curious how they are going to hold up over time as we're working and using them. Oh, slam it a little bit. Decent complement of screwdrivers included. Here are just some of the specialty sockets I had grabbed, and it turns out I needed 
more storage than I thought. We'll get to that in a second, but you have a reasonable amount of SAE and metric Allen sockets here. You have common spark plug sockets. If you have some of the modern super thin sockets, you'll need to get them. They're not included. The Allen keys, the L keys, actually pretty good quality, nice and heavy. I like here. The included bits are pretty useful. Um, you've got some nice nut drivers and common bit sizes, and it's hard to see still in the bag, but you have a small ratcheting wrench bit driver, which is, again, a nice little addition. You have a adjustable wrench. You've got a couple different swivels, extensions, breaker bars. That was pretty good. And again, you'll notice we've got some sockets still in their bags, and that's because they included both six point and 12 point sockets. My honest to goodness, biggest complaint about that Quinn toolkit, and you'll experience it too, so much waste. Every single part comes in its own little bag. It feels a little excessive. I get they're trying to protect the tools from banging around, but that is just a tremendous amount of plastic that you don't necessarily need. So now we can go ahead. We'll end up moving those. Normally I like putting sockets in the top drawers. So, all right, we'll go this way with, with them. Okay, they will fit. I was almost a little worried our half inchers wouldn't fit. It is a very tight fit here. So we'll move these wrenches out. We'll get some sockets in, kind of lay out the toolbox real quick. And uh, I'll pick you up one more time and we'll do a comparison with some of these tools, some of the Silver Eagle and some of the nice ones. You're gonna see mostly just my hands here because I wanted to try to go through and show the difference in these ratchets. Most of these are heavily used. Uh, so it's, I guess not going to be a perfect benchmark but any of the looseness in a heavily used name brand ratchet compared to the brand new Quinn may give you a little bit of its detail. First is just a standard Matco. I believe this was a 72 tooth ratchet, which means inside the head, the gear has 72 teeth, which means when you're working, you don't have to turn it as far to get that next click. So you can see just a simple turn how many clicks you get. And what that works is when you're in tight spaces, you can just click that little and you're able to move and get some purchase in your turning. This is the golden wrench. It's uh, very special. They uh, only sold it to the people willing to spend a lot of money. Uh, I Impulse bought this and it is, I believe a 96 tooth. So you can hear just how many clicks it makes. The downside is when you get too many teeth, they get smaller and they can sometimes get brittle. Normally you don't run into that too much with the Matco or the name brands because they are hardened steel capable of handling that. Next to it is a snap-on. This is a used, fairly well used. This is one of the first ratchets I've got. It's gotten play in the pivot head and you can hear how few clicks it actually makes and how much it's having to turn. This is built with a bolt through design where you have these bolts holding the plate that hold all the guts in. One reason I'm not a big fan of this style is these bolts can start to work loose and you don't notice it. And as things start getting loose, they'll slip and break. And uh, the biggest problem is when you're pulling all really hard and it breaks, you bust your knuckles open. It's not fun. Whereas you compare it to the Matco style, they use a snap ring assembly that tends to keep things much tighter. So I do prefer the snap-on style. So next you have the Quinn, again, Harbor Freight. Um, they tend to go very aggressive against snap-on and uh, so much so is that their icon lineup of tools in a blind kind of, I'm just using them out of a toolbox. I thought I was using a snap-on. So it makes sense that they would copy the bolt design. It does have a fairly fine-toothed head so again, beneficial when you're in tight working areas to be able to not have to ratchet too much to go. Now, the reversing mechanism compared to some of the other ones does feel very clunky and you can kind of half engage it. And if you ever end up in that half engagement, you can very easily strip the teeth. So just when you're using the tool, bite it all the way in. Next to that is my Silver Eagle that came out of my uh, crash kit that I have used and abused extensively. I've uh, hit it with a hammer. Um, holds up strong. It is getting a lot of looseness in it. 
but it holds up well. And you can kind of see some of that wear and how much that's moving. So what it comes down to is what feeling you like. I like the knurling in this style or at least a fairly large section that you can grab with your hand helps prevent slipping. But that's just gonna come down to your preference once you work with it. This, it has that buildup, it has the nice ends, and um, again, <laughs> uh, short of saying snap-on, you know, your snap-on. <laughs> well, what does the phrase tell me your snap-on without saying your snap-on? So. I don't think you're going to go wrong with the Quinn stuff. Uh, we've got it stowed away fairly fairly well organized. I'm just trying to get it thrown in. Let me back it up. So you can see I've just got the SAE, the metric thrown in, universal stuff for now. I need to get some more organizers. we got wrenches tucked away, pliers, and screwdrivers. Now one thing I wanted to show you in pliers and why you need to watch for good quality is most of them are these stamped rivet style and that's what holds these jaws together and if you use them a lot you can get some heavy play there similar to what this gear wrench is doing on these rivets you can see how much it's starting to move and it loses its torquing ability so you can watch for that compare that this is a matco brand a little bit flash rusted but i have used these a lot and there's not a lot of play. So certain products you may want to spend a little bit more money on, but if you're at home just doing this, I don't know. All right, so if you made it this far into the initial tool review video of this Harbor Freight, can you get started for just a $1,000 tool kit? We've actually had a project. There's kind of a big diesel -y stain there where we went ahead and worked on the bus for three days straight which had three extra guys that are part of the bus team in working. And we used all these Harbor Freight tools and I have a pretty good opinion of them so far. So let me kind of go over just what we uh, all kind of thought about it. So first off the toolbox itself, if you're gonna be working on diesel, white is not the color for you. I've did, did a quick wipe down. You can see there's still some smudges. I ended up fairly impressed with this worktop. It is, I don't know what it is. Again, uh, Mr. Dunn couldn't quite determine, but I used it pretty extensively. We dumped a ton of oil on it and then cleaned that with brake clean and it's held up so far. And then there's just some small dents and nicks as you would expect. As far as the sockets ratchets themselves, I was impressed with it, but I ended up going to my primary toolbox just to give the other three guys one centralized place to grab everything because those are still a horrible mess from the move. I haven't gotten them organized. So I figured the new kit, everything in a nice, easy to find place would be good for them. And it worked out great for them. They all, as again, hobbyists to amateurs, thought they worked really well. But before I turned it over to them, I was using them. And again, uh, snap-on feel. They, they look like snap-on on the ratchets and quite frankly, they perform just like it. Wrenches were great, but we do have Something I will staunchly tell you, do not buy. These Pittsburgh pliers, the ones that have these nuts for the slip joint adjustables, these go, well, they would go there, but as you can tell, just that toss, it broke apart. Absolute trash, that slip joint, that nut strips right out of it. And I had that issue, the other guys had the issue, worthless. The other pliers that are the rivet style, those performed well, but they come as one big kit. So these Pittsburgh are junk. Don't buy those. So far, everything else in this toolbox, I am very impressed with. All right, the moment of uh, truth. I'm sure that you guys have been waiting for this. Uh, should you buy these tools? And uh, why does my opinion matter? One, I've got uh, quite a few professional years of doing this with many years tinkering beforehand. I've Use tools a lot and have broken a lot of tools, abused a lot of tools. So I feel like I've got pretty good experience. When I first started working in the dealerships and professional setting, again, I had the, the old gray hair guys telling me, don't buy the expensive stuff. I don't need it to start with. And I bought all expensive stuff. Did I need to? Again, in this day and age, I don't think you do. I believe Harbor Freight is offering, uh, at least in their Quinn line, a very good introductory tool. What I am going to start doing um, for the next couple projects here 
I'm gonna try to work just out of this toolbox. If I need it, I'll get it from Harbor Freight and uh, supplement this toolbox because I want to give you the best advice possible. And on the surface, it's uh, don't spend $1,000 on one set of sockets and a ratchet. You can spend $1,000, get a tool chest, some organizational stuff, as well as a pretty reasonable toolkit on the surface. So time's gonna tell if uh, this ends up being another Nissan Titan where uh, I have to apologize for liking it or not, but uh, I don't think we're gonna go wrong. Cheap tools can do a really good job, and if you're just starting to learn and don't wanna have to invest a ton of money, they have their place. Or if you're in your garage and don't want the cheapest of cheap, you want something a little bit better, I, th I think this is gonna do a good job for you. So. As always, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me here in the shop as we uh, explore tools and talk about something a little different to get you ready to wrench every day. Uh, I'm Jared, reminding you to always make questionable choices. And just because it's cheap doesn't make it bad. We'll see you.